Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have for you a part two on my previous video of getting started with Langchain. Um, so before I showed you, you know, how to set up a chain within Langchain, which is basically an LLM that you've chosen to embed with, you know, your own prompts, uh, deciding, hey, I want to have them as a technical writer. Um, I want to actually be able to query documents and then turn those documents into vectors and then use those, feed them into the uh, large language model, which we're using Olama2, um, and then creating a retrieval chain where now we can query directly a document um, by feeding it into an LLM and using the power of that LLM combined with the information contained within the document to give us really good outputs. Um, however, that's not all. Uh, if you're interested in kind of seeing how to set all that up, really recommend you go check out my previous video. I'll put the link in the description uh, below so you can go check that out. Um, but today what we're gonna do is kind of go a little deeper and actually build a conversation chain. So instead of just asking a single question, how do we build a framework to actually uh, build almost a quasi chatbot, but on a specific section of information? Um, so we're gonna need to change a couple things. First, the retrieval uh, method, we're gonna to want to not only take into account the most recent input, like we have before, just a single question, but we want it to actually take the entire history of that conversation into account when they are coming up with their responses. So you don't just have, you know, kind of an endless loop of them constantly trying to just start from the beginning. Um, so to get started with this, the first thing we're gonna do is actually need to create a new chain. Um, so what we'll do is create a new code block here. Um, and then within this code block, we are going to import the Langchain Create History Aware Retriever. Um, so this is an object that will allow us to create, take in uh, conversation history and return documents. So we don't have to build uh, all that logic ourselves, which would be nigh impossible. And then we also have a uh, message placeholder. And this is a prompt template that basically says, hey, this variable that you're gonna be passing in this prompt is already a full list of messages. Um, then in our chat prompt template. Uh, this is, you know, again, just how we're creating these uh, templated prompts or creating prompts and giving, assigning it a template. Um, so here we have our messages placeholder, variable name, chat history, user inputs. That's the input that we're actually going to uh, feed in when we submit our question. And then say, hey, given the above conversation, generate a search query to look up information relevant to that conversation. So using the uh, existing information that we've given it into the conversation, give us an answer that is based on that. And then we're going to wrap all of this into a retriever chain. Um, so the history where retriever chain uh, takes in conversation history, um, any documents that have been fed into it, any other information, and then we'll give us a uh, answer based on that prompt. So what we'll do here is just run this code block to actually generate uh, this chain. And then to interact with it, we'll need to create another Python code block uh, to actually ask it a follow-up question. So within this code block, we're going to import a human message and AI message. Um, and I think you guys can guess what those are. Um, so the chat history here, we are wrapping our uh, human message, which this imagine would be me feeding this information into the chat. So can Langsmith help chest my, test my LLM applications? And the AI message, the answer would be yes. So now the way we actually get that information in is because we've created this placeholder or this, sorry, prompt template where we're feeding in that chat history, we can actually just feed in all the chat history kind of as this single object um, and then give it a user input, which is just tell me how. So if you run this and I'll pause for it to give a response, this will actually give me a response based on not only just my tell me how, which has no context by its own, but we'll use the chat history to provide that inf additional information. And now here we have uh, a document and this is just several instances within the documentation of where we have information that is going to tell you how you can test your uh, LLM applications with Langsmith. Um, so you can see here referencing the page content, which is why you have things like skip to main content because these are kind of just, you know, the interspersed blocks of text that allow you to link around the page. Um, so to make this a little bit better, we are going to want to make this a little bit cleaner. Um, but what we'll want to then do then now is actually create a chain with this retriever function alongside of it. So we have our retriever chain, but then what we're gonna to wanna to do is reference those documents from that previous query. So here we have our prompt, uh, chat GPT template from messages. Again, feeding in the user's questions based on the below context, which is just a way for us to dynamically feed in that messages placeholder, which is containing all of our chat history. Um, and then additionally, it will, because you know answer the user's question based on the below context, our input is going to also be asking a question. 
And you can see here our document chain. So create stuff documents chain. Um, and this again is a chain for passing a list of documents to a model. Um, so here what we're doing is taking all those documents because they're within the prompt um, and then creating a retrieval chain, combining this previous retriever chain. So uh, this one we created here that is history aware alongside the document chain um, to create a document retrieval chain. So now it can reference not only our past uh, questions, but also our uh, past retrieved documents. So let's just run here to create that new chain. And then what we'll want to do is test that again with a similar format. So here we will go and use chat history. Uh, again, just the same exact thing as before, invoking the chat history. And let's see if we get a better response. Um, hopefully we should. And here we can see the output, uh, which again is just taking, hey, tell me how, uh, taking those documents in, but then actually feeding them into an answer. So instead of just kind of that raw documents, which isn't, you know, while I could parse through that and get an answer, I could also just read the documentation and get it. The advantage of this is obviously having a chatbot do the kind of condensing of just the information I need. So here you can see the answer response here, the different ways that Langsmith can help me test my LLM applications, uh, debugs and formatting logic, do, 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 do. Um, and I can keep scrolling here, but basically it's just a much more organized um, and human readable way of the answer that I actually wanted to get. Um, so now we have a retrieval chain that is a chatbot, but how do we turn this into an actual functioning agent? Now, an agent in AI is, or the LLM is actually going to decide which steps to take. We don't have to do kind of this manual feeding of, hey, take these documents, then retrieve them, and then use them to answer the questions. Um, and for this, we're actually going to need to switch to using OpenAI um, for creating our uh, LLM because uh, OpenAI, I guess, is the only one that is uh, fully built out enough to be reliable here. Um, local models, I guess, just aren't reliable enough yet to use them to have kind of this higher level logic. So we're going to need to take a step back for a second um, and just rebuild some of what we already built, but uh, within AI. So what we'll do first is create a new retriever tool. Um, so retriever tools are very similar to kind of what we have before. They're just basically predefined mechanisms for, you know, the AI use or retrievers will allows it to retrieve information. Um, and obviously here it's going to be retrieving information about lengths of search. So we'll use this to just quickly create a retriever tool. Um, and this will search for information about Langsmith using the retriever that we had previously created. Uh, if we go all the way up here to vector as retriever. Um, so we have our retriever method. Then what we'll also need to do is actually start using a search tool called uh, Tavili. So Tavili, and I'll pull it up on the screen here. So just go to this app.tavili website, and then I'll skip kind of just the sign-in process for you, and then skip ahead to where we're actually gonna create the AI, API key we're gonna use. And you actually really didn't need to do anything. All I did was sign in with a Google account, and then you can copy this API token. Um, and this will allow you to obviously interact with the Tavili API. So copy this, and then meet me back over in local dev. So before we actually get started using it, we're going to need to install it, as you might guess. So just installing the uh, Tavili package from the Langchain community. Um, so just run that command and then let this play out. So here, just take this command, Tavili API key, get that one from your Tavili account, and then boom, we now have, we should have access to a Tavili API key. Not going to say we do because I haven't tested it yet. And that's always a good shot, shot that it didn't work. Um, so here, import Tavili search results, search equals Tavili results, and we need an API key. So one second. All right, so 100% not best practices. So definitely don't follow me along on this, but it's a free API key and I don't really care if any of you use it. So uh, here, setting the environment variable, just because for whatever reason it wasn't working, I think because I have nine Python environments running on my computer right now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just, Next, it should work for you if you're using your base Python environment on your computer, but now we've created our search tool with Tavili. Um, and then what we'll do is just create a set of tools. Um, so here, retriever tool search. Um, and then we are also going to need to pip install Langchain Hub um, to actually create an agent to use this. Um, so I'll go deeper on how to create agents and kind of the, what they mean uh, in a separate guide. But for today, I just wanted to quick show you, you know, how you can take what I've already taught you and just get started integrating uh, you know, platforms like OpenAI into it. So we're also going to need to uh, install Langchain Hub. Um, and then we are going to, so see here, just installing it all. Um, clear. 
And then we'll have to run with that. So as I mentioned before, you know, we're going to have to start using OpenAI um, for actually creating these agents. So what we're going to do is import chat OpenAI, import Langchain Hub, import uh, create OpenAI functions agents, um, and then get a prompt. So here we're just going to uh, use an API uh, OpenAI functions agent. So generic out of the box. Um, and we also have chat OpenAI model uh, chat GPT Turbo, uh, nice and fast. And we'll just run it here to see what errors we get. Boom. Uh, so no module called Langchain Hub. So time to figure out how to fix this and I'll be right back. Cool. So just had to make sure I installed Langchain Hub in my right environment. And I also had to export a OpenAI API key. Did it the exact same way as I just did it for the Tamali one. Um, and I assume if you're watching this video, you probably know how to interact with OpenAI API. So I won't bother, you know, it's kind of selling this video down with those processes. But essentially what we're doing here is just instead of using local llama, we're using uh, chat OpenAI as our LLM using the 3.5 turbo. Um, and then here we're creating an agent that uses that has access to that both retrieval tool and the search tools. So not only can it retrieve documents you already have, but can also search for other documents. Um, then we're going to create something called an agent executor. And again, probably be a topic against future videos, but this is just a type of agent that is allowed to use certain tools outside of just chat interaction functionality. Um, so once we have set the agent up, then we can start testing it. So first thing, super basic, how does Langsmith help with testing? Exactly we've done before. So you can see here, we're entering a new agent executor chain. And so that's something that's distinct about previous chains is that each agent is kind of its own uh, entity. And so it's able to go through, retrieve all those documents, use search to find any existing information that's correlated to it, and then give us a full uh, length chain or full chain summary of the different ways that we can use uh, Langsmith Smith to testing. Now, even cooler is that, hey, let's ask it about the weather and SF because it now has that Tavali functionality to actually search the internet, add additional information. And so here we can go use that Tavali search results um, with the query weather in San Francisco. And what this will do is search for weather in San Francisco, find a relevant uh, website. So weatherspark.com, you can see weather in January, 2024. And you have the current weather in San Francisco is 52 degrees, the wind and mostly cloudy. So let's actually see if this is right. Um, so if we go over to back into weather, switch into pretty, pretty damn close. Um, so a lot of, you know, a lot of people, get mad at ChatGPT because it can't query existing, uh, you know, inter internet information. It's only trained on a certain subset of data. So if you're looking to have this kind of search functionality within your chat functions, bring into Volley. Um, it is a great way to have this be able to, hey, you know, I, you don't even need to tell it to go search for something. It just knows, hey, if I'm asking for current information or something that isn't available within the CLM, let's actually go out there and find that information. Um, and then the final thing I'll show you here is just how to have a conversation with it. So here, um, you know, again, using that same kind of chat history method here, uh, entering a new agent executor chain, tell me how, pulling in that existing information. And you can see here, you'll have kind of that information with the output um, and the different responses there. So that's all I have for you today. Part two of the Lang chain guide, um, you know, showing you how to not only bring in documents, but actually have a search functionality, have a true agent that can converse with you um, and give you the most recent updated information. So hope you found this video helpful. I found it very fun to make, so I'm probably going to keep making more of these. Um, and above all else, have a good rest of your day. Daddy guy out.